Shortly after midnight on March 8, 2014, Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 with 239 passengers and crew on board took off from Kuala Lumpur International Airport. As the plane prepared to enter Vietnamese airspace, it suddenly disappeared from radar screens. Based on data provided by Inmarsat satellites, the aircraft appeared to follow a path towards the southern Indian Ocean until it ran out of fuel, eventually coming down somewhere out at sea in a vast area of Australia. For the world, the loss of Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 is one of the great mysteries of our time. And so began the largest underwater search in aviation history in an area covering 120,000 square kilometres and in depths of up to 5.5 kilometres. This area is massive in size, bigger than any other search ever performed at this kind of water depth because this area is so remote, so far away, and it's such a difficult place to not only get to, but also to map. Very quickly, Malaysia, China and Australia began operations to locate the missing aircraft. And, as one of the few companies in the world with the necessary resources and experience, the Australian government invited Fugro to provide vessels and technology to search for the lost plane. We are using cutting-edge technology and world experts in underwater search operations. At least six days from the port of Fremantle, the remoteness of the search area would present unique challenges to the members of the search team. It's a lot of ocean and you, you literally, you just look out and there's nothing but ocean for days. The challenges of working in an environment six days out from the coast and also with this amount of cable out is probably never been done before. We're more than seven days sail from the nearest civilization, which is Western Australia. So it's an awful long way if, if things go wrong. Never previously mapped, the search area featured a dramatic subsea environment, including towering underwater mountains, volcanoes, and long rift valleys. And then once we get down to the seaport with the underwater vehicles, the terrain is very treacherous. Uh, there's sea mounds and valleys, 2,000 meters high, 4,000 meters deep. That's over two miles down with one mile high canyons and valleys that we're gonna encounter down there. So it's really a difficult area to work in. And above sea, in the harsh Southern Ocean, the environment was no more inviting, with wind speeds reaching 150 kilometers per hour and waves up to 23 meters high. Whenever you look out over the horizon, it's just... <laughs> you look out on the bridge and you can see waves that are the height of the bridge or bigger. It's exciting and it's scary at the same time. You don't go home at night. You go back to your bunk. It's rough where we are, it's terribly rough, so you don't sleep particularly well. So fatigue is one of our, our biggest issues offshore. In stormy weather, you, you're not going to get more than a couple of hours sleep at the time. Some nights it's a lot harder than others, depending on how much the ship rocks. You just kind of get through it, you know. It's not like one person's suffering, everyone's going through it. Based on board four specialist vessels, Fugro deployed a highly skilled multinational team of over 200 people. The Fugro team, which included geophysicists, online surveyors, technicians, vessel technical managers, data processors and party chiefs, employed a host of state-of-the-art technology. We've assembled an international team of experts from all over the world with some really high, highly sophisticated underwater mapping equipment. It's got to work in extreme depths in a very extreme environment, both on the surface and underwater. During the first phase of the search, the bathymetry survey, a ship hull-mounted multi-beam echo sounder was used to produce the 3D terrain and texture maps that the team needed to plan and execute the second stage of the project to locate and identify the wreckage. For this, the team used fully equipped, customised deep-tow sonar vehicles towed on cables behind the vessels. These vehicles reached depths of up to six kilometres. 
She's a long vehicle, she's uh, about three and a half meters long, and she's rated to 6,000 meters. So we can go all the way down to as far as we need to go. This is the nose of the vehicle, that's the stern of the vehicle. So on the nose, this is how we tow her. So this is the tow lines, and this is the fiber optic umbilical, which is where all the data comes up to the surface. On the back deck, we have a 20 ton winch with 10,000 liters of cable on it. We use this cable to tow the tow fish 150 meters above the seabed. The fish sits probably about eight kilometers behind the boat. My job is to pretty much keep the ship running on that line the whole time and making sure that the data is good. Our primary acquisition source is the um, side scan sonar that we have. It's, a, it's quite a um, uh, long range device. We can look a thousand metres either side of the fish and then we've got a multi-beam sonar which looks directly below us. This is uh, also read to 6,000 metres and uh, that provides us the, a, a full insonification of the seafloor from the, the starboard side out a kilometre to the port side of the kilometre and underneath the fish. So that gives us full insonification where we go. The areas with the most complex and challenging undersea topography were covered by AUVs equipped with similar technology and specifically designed for high resolution survey operations in remote, deep water locations. Throughout the project, the team acquired large amounts of data and Fugro's capacity to stream this back to shore via satellite enabled onshore analysts to review and check the output in near real time. It also allowed the Australian Transport Safety Bureau to stay informed and in control. This data comes up through the processing room. Guys look at it and then get dispatched to the beach for further processing. Well, we're acquiring about 50 gigabytes a day and sending two and a half gigabytes back to uh, shore via satellite. The people on the vessel are so busy. They're, the amount of data that they actually receive, they're, they're busy 24-7 just processing that. That's why we do it here. We've got lots, lots of eyes here as well that looking at the same data so we get quite a thorough look at it all. The sophisticated equipment enables the team to map the sea floor to a high level of accuracy. We actually create um, images of the sea floor to a one metre resolution and as everybody knows a, a 777 aircraft is significantly larger than one square metre so there's very little chance of us flying over it and not finding the aircraft. The team located wrecks, including 19th century sailing ships, at depths of up to four kilometers. But as they covered the last strips of the search zone, it became clear that the MH370 had come down elsewhere. As the crew of the Fugro Equator made their last trip back to port to a welcoming committee of government ministers from Malaysia, China and Australia, they could reflect on what they'd achieved. We're here today to say thank you for your efforts. Uh, from our perspective in the Australian government, we're just incredibly thankful. You can't imagine here on land uh, what you've experienced offshore. Simply want to say that thank you on behalf of the Prime Minister, on behalf of the Australian people. The search team shared a passion to solve the mystery. They'd spent over one million man hours at sea and travelled over a quarter of a million kilometres. Their efforts have led to an improved knowledge of the remote search area, even greater confidence in the technology, methodology and expertise deployed. And they stand ready, if asked, to continue the search in new areas, to finally bring closure for the families of the lost crew and passengers of the MH370.